Immediately, did you see that? He just hammered it. Big fish too, look at that. Oh, 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 oh look at that. Welcome everybody to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. I'm at Three Rivers Lodge in Labrador, one of the most beautiful places in the world. And I'm so excited because joining me is Tom Rosenbauer. And somebody that's even more special than Tom Rosenbauer are the big, beautiful brook trout. Wild brook trout, up to seven, eight pounds. And we're gonna be getting them on top water flies. Tom's gonna to be talking about techniques and the ways to catch them. It's gonna be an absolutely fabulous show. I know you're gonna love it. Stay with us. For Tom and I, our adventure began in Labrador City. After spending a night at a local motel, in the morning we boarded a float plane to fly approximately 150 miles northeast to Three Rivers Lodge. The lodge is located on Crossroads Lake, which is part of the Woods River system. These waters can only be accessed by flying. This vast river, which is over 100 miles long and holds over a dozen brawling rapids, contains world-class fishing and is considered by many as one of the best brook trout fisheries in Canada. It is known for not only the size of brookies, but also for the quantity you can catch each day. On top of that, you can find yourself fishing for lake trout, whitefish, and also northern pike. The lodge also offers flyouts for Arctic char and landlocked salmon. While enjoying the many fishing opportunities this area has to offer, you can also expect to see all sorts of wildlife, ranging from moose to eagles. All this while surrounded by the breathtaking landscapes of Labrador. These are some of the reasons why this area is considered a bucket list destination by most anglers. After arriving at the lodge, we settled into our rooms and got our gear unpacked. We were warmed with coffee and a hearty breakfast before getting into our waders and heading out on the river. Tom has never caught a brook trout over 15 inches and is very excited to start wading these waters on the hunt for some big brookies. Our local guide, Brady Slade, took us to the first run of the trip. This run of tumbling water, boulders and pools is called the Lower Ricks. We had a nice walk through the woods with Brady. We're at Lower Ricks. So we're here in uh, what people would call pocket water or a boulder garden. Lots of big rocks, lots of swirls, lots of different currents and um, we don't know what the fish are going to take. I'm going to start with a dry dropper with a relatively large dry and a nymph just because uh, I don't know what's going on. I've never fished here before and that's a good way to start. I think before I came to Labrador my biggest brook trout was 15 inches. My very first Labrador brook trout just just blew me away. It was a small fish for here. It was maybe three pounds. It was just floored by the size and the color of that fish. When I first came to Labrador in, um, God, sometime in the mid 90s, it was, well, I came up here for the big brook trout. Yeah, everybody hears about the big brook trout. It's one of the wildest, emptiest, prettiest places I've ever been. At this point, I think this is my ninth or 10th trip here. And at this point, the people are my friends, I'm comfortable here, and it's arguably the best brook trout fishing in the world. Simple as that. Watching brook trout smash mice patterns on the surface is every fly angler's dream and one of the big draws of Labrador. Whoa, wow. Oh my God. Woo!
It doesn't happen every day, but when the conditions are right, it is the best brook trout fishing that you can probably experience. When we return, Tom and I hook into some massive fish on mice patterns. Today we woke up to the beautiful sight of the morning mist lifting from the lake in front of the lodge. After a hot coffee and delicious breakfast, we quickly got dressed into our fishing gear and boarded a float plane to head to a new river. Tom and I both started by casting mice patterns to see if we could trigger a strike from a brook trout. What happened next is something Tom will always remember. We're here in a different river today. It's at the outlet of a lake and um, we don't know much about it. And uh, it's fairly wide. You can see it's wide and shallower here. There's a central current thread going through here where the trout probably are and not knowing anything else, we're gonna try a mouse. Oh, yeah! Woo! So this is the biggest brook trout of my life. I can tell you that for sure, because I've never caught one over 15 inches before. Wow. Oh, my God. Look at that color. Uh, uh. Okay, wow. Oh my God. Look at those colors. Nice. Uh. Wow, what a beautiful fish. My God. That was a big fish. So I did something really stupid there. I just broke off a fish. And uh, what happened was, had caught a nice fish, a couple casts before, hooked another fish, put a little pressure on it, and the tippet snapped in the middle of the tippet. They're big fish, there's a lot of rocks, and they're pretty abrasive. I wasn't smart enough to check my leader after that fish. And you, what you wanna do is after you catch a big fish, look at your knot, and then look at your leader, look for signs of abrasion, make sure that your leader is still sound. Today was unlike any day we've ever experienced while brook trout fishing. As we continued to work our way down the run, we had a surreal number of brook trout slashing and exploding on our mouse patterns on the surface. That was just the most explosive take, came clear out of the water on it. Got his head up. Oh, good job. Oh, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely stunning fish. Look at the orange. Oh. Off it swims back into the pool. Wow. This is so much fun, I can't even tell you. And to catch these type of fish where every one of them looks like something spectacular out of a painting. The next few hours of fishing would be considered brook trout heaven by any angler. Oh! Big, another male looks like. Male, what do you think? Is that a male? Yeah, I think it's male. Well, by that color. Looks like you have a good girl, too. Yeah. Okay, coming over to you. Wow, now that fish was right in front of us here. 
And every one of these fish has taken the mouse on the paws. So, um, you know, I've started to slow down my retrieve and let it sit there. And the fish have come up and almost sipped it like a mayfly. They, they haven't been explosive strikes that you normally think of for a mouse. It's been, they've been very subtle and you just see the head come up and the mouse is gone. Wow. Oh, what a strike! Wow! Whoa, wow. Oh my god. Woo! That is amazing. What an outstanding day we've just had. We cannot wait to see what the rest of this trip will bring. Stay tuned. Another incredible day has come to Labrador and Three Rivers Lodge. After a hearty breakfast and numerous cups of hot coffee, we embark on another adventure on the Woods River system. We boarded the float plane and headed to another area, which is known as Indian Rapids. After carefully examining the run, Tom tells us about how he plans to work the area to figure out where the brook trout are holding. So we're in a new river today. I purposely didn't ask Brady where the fish are gonna be. I wanted to see what we can find out. So we're at a nice, good flowing riffle here. I don't know how deep it is. The fish are generally gonna be in deeper pockets. So I'm gonna assume that there's a deep pocket below this riffle and then when it flattens out, and I'm just gonna work through it first with a mouse. Here we know a mouse will work and it's a good searching pattern and you can actually see the fish roll on it when they're interested. So we'll start with a mouse. The fish could be in shallow, I don't wanna spook them. And I don't even know how deep it is out there so I'll gradually wade out, see how deep it gets, see if I can find a little bit deeper spot where the trout might be holding. Once I get closer to those deeper spots, I should be able to spot them, but we'll see. Oh yeah! trying to keep side pressure on the fish because I don't want them to be hanging directly downstream if I can. That's when that hook pulls out. So I'm trying to, even though I'm leading them over in a little bit faster water, it's really not that fast. And probably I should, even though this fish didn't take a run, I'm gonna get my line in here just to get it away from the net. You wanna try to get that rod to the side so that you're not pulling them straight upstream. Ideally, I'd want to get downstream of this fish, but I don't want to wade through this water and, um, and spook other fish that might be in there. Nice female brook trout. Oh, wow. <laughs> Woo. Very, very nice fish. And in the water. Off she goes. Good job, time, buddy. Thank you, man. Well done. So it's one thing to know how to read the water, but you have to temper that with local knowledge and the conditions. So in the spot I'm standing in now, or the, the water I'm fishing, I would look at that slow foam line over against those alders. It's a nice current there. You can see the bubbles, so you know the food is drifting down there. But all the hits I've gotten have been out in this heavier water just below where I'm standing. Oh! 
I literally just put this fly on. I've been using a streamer, and I just put a gurgler on, and oh, just hammered. First cast, oh, lost him. Uh, it's barbless, but you know something? This is so much fun. These gurglers, the mice, they're just getting hammered by these big brook trout. They love a big piece of meat on the surface. Uh, gotta cast out and get another one. Ooh, big fish. Oh, look at that power. Oh, it's coming at me, reeling fast. He's using this current and this five weight rod. We've got both a five and a six here, and they're perfect for this place. This is where you need to have really good leader. And I'm using 10 pound uh, 1x leader. Okay, and getting his head up, getting his head up. Yeah. The size of that brook shirt, it's going in that. It's unbelievable. Let me get my fly out here. It's barbus, so it should pop right out. There it is. Comes out, drop that. Beautiful, beautiful brook trout. And colors. Incredible colors in the fins. It's absolutely insane how aggressive these brook trout can be. For the remainder of the day, we continued to fish using mice patterns. Every few casts, a fish would explode on the surface and engulf our fly. This was another remarkable day of fishing and something every angler should experience in their life. Like all outstanding days, they go by quickly. Soon we're back at the lodge, exchanging stories of the great fishing while taking in yet another beautiful sunset. Tomorrow, we embark on another wild and unique fishing adventure. The weather's supposed to be overcast and rainy, perfect for casting streamers for aggressive lake trout. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Took that smelt pattern I just changed to. Stay with us for more action. It's a rainy day here at Three Rivers Lodge. We've decided to take it slow this morning, relax on the porch, watch the rain, and chat with the other lodge guests. After getting out on the water and doing a little exploring, it didn't take long for our guide, Brady, to help us locate the lake trout. Unbelievably, the Lakers were in three to eight feet of water, attacking bait fish in anything they could eat. Using streamers and eight weight rods, Tom and I experienced some absolutely wild action over the next few hours. In fact, in that six hour or so period, we successfully landed and released 25 lake trout. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, strong. Look at the power of these lake trout. Well, well, I'm fighting this fish. I just want to say what an incredible week we've had. Uh, Brady, you've been fantastic. And all the people at Three Rivers Lodge are just absolutely the best. They're just so much fun. They've made this week fantastic for both Tom and I. And of course, Tom, thank you very much for being in the show. Colin, thank you for inviting me. It has been a real pleasure. Look at that fish. That's it's a, a big nice one. one. That's a great way to end the day. Whoa. And this will give us number 13 for the baker's dozen. And we're no, not that's done. that's 14. Well, it's 14, Tom, but I don't know. I'm not gonna count that little one. They gotta be over six, seven pounds to make them real. Isn't that terrible? Terrible problem. Okay, got his head up. Got his head up. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Go ahead there, Brady, you can get him. I got his head up. Oh. <laughs> He's not letting me get him in. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. Well, listen, folks, I'm going to let this fish go. We've had a fantastic week here at Three Rivers Lodge. Thank you for watching. And if you want to see more of the show, more tips, techniques, and lots of stuff with Tom Rosenbauer, go to our YouTube channel, The New Fly Fisher, or go and see us on the World Wide Web at thenewflyfisher.com. 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the water. Okay, let's get them in. Look at that beautiful fish. Look at the colors. Take them, gently put them in. Oh, it's already ready to go. Ooh. Three feet of water, four feet of water. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads.